Carrying on with the audio area entity, we're actually going to talk about nesting. And nesting works specifically through a group ID and then being able to drive the priority within two objects that may be exactly having competing sounds or ambient volumes within the same space. So what I'm going to do is drag in an actual box. I'm going to go in and make sure toggle snapping to geometry is on. And I'm going to grab an area box and just drop it into the scene. So we're going to go in here a little bit and we're going to change the height for sure. Let's go and make that 5 like the other. And then I think what we'll do is we'll make the width and the length about 8. So it's just right inside of it. Next what we're going to do is actually before I move on let me press display filled so I can see it. I'm going to go in and grab a, another audio entity. So let's go to audio, audio area entity. And let's put this over to the side here so we know there's a difference. I'm going to disable the snapping to geometry. Move it upward and let's call this one AAE underscore inner. With that done, what we're going to do is select the inner box shape. We're going to grab the attached entities and we're going to add. We're going to pick the actual inner shape. So now we have a nice little connection. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create a flow graph. Create a new one and we'll call this one AAE underscore inner underscore FG. And we're going to add the selected entity like before and quickly set it up so the audio works like the other. I'm going to select the trigger. I'm going to select the RTPC. I'm going to make sure that both of them are assigned to the graph entity. And then I'm going to quickly connect the corresponding play and stop triggers. So we had the mysterious. So let's just go right down the line and we'll get the cicadas up and running and we'll also make sure that we pick the fade distance. So now that's all set up, what we want to do is we want to actually make sure that we're able to house both of these shapes in the same area. So to do that, we're going to pick this shape and we're going to give it a group ID of Let's give it a 10 value, so we always go in increments of 10, that way we have some room to work back or forward. That way it's not just 1, 2, 3, but we actually have 9, 8. And if you have to refine things over time, it's nice to give you the padding. And we'll make the priority on this one as well as 10. So we have this shape and it's connected. And the next thing we want to do is go to this area box and we will assign the same group ID, but this time we will give it a priority of 20, so that means it has a higher priority than the outside box. So making sure everything's connected, it looks like it's all there. I'm going to go ahead and press the play button. So now we have an audio area entity inside and it's giving me the cave mysterious. So if we go forward, we can notice as we get closer to this, we now have a cicada that's actually nested inside of here. And in my own headphones, I can hear the cicadas, but now the cave mysterious is kind of blending inward. So this is a way you can actually nest sounds within the same shape area while not having the overlap inside of the other shape. So it's a really good way of being able to have complex areas and sounds that otherwise may override each other. and then. Doing this, you can completely remove that chance.